what's this show called again? It's called Milk and Scream. It's it's called Milk and Screams. Milk and Milk and what? Milk and Screams. Whatever you said, welcome back to it. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, welcome back to this show. Um, the title is on on the screen, or if 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 uh, you forgot where you were, you can look down at your phone, and it'll say something along the lines of like an episode title about something stupid, and then it'll say, what is it? I'm sorry, what is it again? Milk and Screams. You're confusing me. I Milk don't know what's screams. happening. Okay, cool. Um, welcome to this show. Yeah, welcome, everybody. Welcome. Everybody's welcome here. Everybody. Don't even think. If you think for a second, you're like, am I, am I okay to be here? I don't know if they like me. We like you. It's 100% true. Probably. Don't, Kyle, we have to have a single policy. I, I like a hundred percent of you. There's only most of the two time. of us. We can't have. We can't be divided on anything. We have to come to an agreement. That's on the whole point of having two people instead of one is divisiveness. No, no, it's not. That's the only reason I did this with you because I want to disagree with everything you say, and I want everybody that's listening to always go on my side of the argument. So we can do that. That's fine. Cool. But with this policy in particular. With us just loving everybody and liking everybody and just being like, you're welcome to listen to this show. Right. What was this show called again? I'm not going to say it again. You've got you've got a bigger brain than this. I, I, I just forgot. I'm sorry. I can't remember the name. It's called um, Milk and Screams. Milk and Screams. Thank you. Uh, this show. Everybody's welcome to listen to it, especially if you got ears. If you got ears, you know seals don't have like ears. Like They have like little holes in the side of their head. They have Kyle, holes. They don't have ears. Well, like they have. You ruined my. You ruined my question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's <laughs> happening, Jacob. Um. What's your What's your cell phone number? I'm not gonna tell you that. <laughs> uh, we're gonna put Kyle's cell phone number on the bottom of the screen. No, we're not. I edit these. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> we're gonna put it there so you, anyone who wants to call Kyle can call Kyle. You know what? I'll put I'll put a fake phone number there, and you can have a conversation with that wonderful person on you, the other end of that the, line. The rubs of bacon on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking about is the rubs of bacon on it <laughs> number. <laughs> but I didn't think anyone else would understand that. For those of you who don't know, Rhett and Lake made a video 12 years ago called Rubs of Bacon on It. And basically, rubs of bacon on it. at the end of the video, they made a a call line that you can still call to this day. I don't remember the number. Um, Neither do I. And you can tell the bacon bot your problem. Like you can say, like for example, like my best friend, you know, won't shut up or whatever. That's a real problem that I face daily. <laughs> it's a real problem, and the robot will tell you rub some bacon on it, uh, and it still works to this day. So we called it the other night and said something stupid. Do you think they make money somehow off of people calling that number? I sincerely doubt it. I also do, but I, I think bet you they pay they money they to keep the, the number the same. Maybe, yeah. But I wonder if they just get like the smallest amount of cents back when that phone number is called somehow. I don't know how, but I wonder if that's if that's the case. Because I mean, if I'm them, I probably wouldn't buy a whole phone number. If that wasn't gonna also net me something in return, no, it, it, that's the bit. It's just the bit that they wanted to do. I don't know in terms of a business standpoint, because they were. I mean, I guess they had already gotten huge at that point, right? Yeah. So maybe it wouldn't have really been too big of a dent for them, but nah, nah. not my bo- not my boys. <laughs> Kyle. Yes, Jacob. What constitutes a sport? Oh, good, good. Just throwing this at me. So. Okay, here, here's the thing, folks. We typically talk about what we're going to talk about before the main talk about po- uh, topic that we have. And then today, Jacob was just like, just start it. I'm going to ask you a question. So, this is the question. Before you go any further, I have no sticks, no dogs, no guns, no nothing. I don't have any of that in this fight okay. at all. I don't have any like I don't have anything. I'm I'm empty-handed. So whatever you come up with, I have to agree with. Well, interesting. You better be good. You better not say something stupid. Well, I mean, I've thought about this and I mean, my opinion has changed over the years because like for instance, it really bugs me when people say that cheerleading isn't a sport. That really bugs I agree. me. Cheerleading is definitely a sport. Shout out to Emily, my little sister. She's yeah, what a cheerleader. Up? I mean, obviously Obviously, you're part of a competitive team. So the competitive nature of it is sports like 
but also cheerleading is hard and there's a, a great deal of athleticism and physical exertion that goes into it. So I don't really understand. Like I get the, I, I understand the point that some people want to make that, you know, video gaming, that's not a sport. Like I get where their mindset is because, you know, they're about the, the physical activity of sports brain. That's what they deem as sports, right? But some of those same people are the people that say cheerleading's not a sport. It's just uh, glorified dancing. That really bugs me a lot. So my opinion has always been if you're asking, the answer is yes. Interesting. Because why make that distinction? The only reason you're making that distinction is to belittle somebody else. Why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Yes, chess. but chess. See, it takes a lot of mental fortitude, takes a lot of strategy. It's a sport. And and it's hard and see in my mind, it's hard for me to call that a sport. It, it, see, and the only reason you're you're like, well, you're only in our club if you run and sweat and bleed. If you don't, it, you know what I mean? That that is my distinction. If you're asking the question, is this a sport or if someone's like, yeah, this is a sport. It's a sport. I think you're competing. No, I know. I know. But I mean, that's just like in Japan, for instance, right? There's this competition that they do for money, like big competition. That they do in arenas. It's a rock, paper, scissors contest. Yeah. That is not a sport. I've, I've seen those dude. I would pay money to watch that in America. I mean, it's, I can, it's very cool. And I think that's a definitely a sport. I don't think that it is, but Again, A, you have to agree with me. Your I words, know. not mine. But it, it it's really difficult to pin it down for me I, because, A, you take the word itself, right? If you're doing something for sport, then that's where the word comes from. You know, like, you know, doing it for sport, for fun, for, you know, whatever. Okay. So if you use that definition. That's what, that, that's what I'm getting to. Let me say my words before you jump in with your dumb words. <laughs> okay. Using that definition, yes, pretty much anything that – you're doing for sport and it at this point also has a competitive nature to it is a sport but also there's this there's a connotation that's come with the word sport that is also started to become the denotation with it as well that is the physical exertion which is which is the one that I kind of more agree with like competitive video gaming very cool like like you're it's it's competitive and you're making money Sure. The fact that you call it a sport or not, I don't think saying that's not a sport, or at least for me, I know some people have this mindset, but for me, when I say video gaming is not a sport, that's not to belittle the people that make money for video games. They're making money and they're really good at what they do. That's awesome. But it's not to just keep them out of the club of sport. I just think that sports needs the physical exertion side of it. Let's take video games out of it. Video games, I've never heard it called a sport. I've always heard it called esports. So, well, that's so, still sport. No, I, I think esports is, 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 is making that distinction because video games is very different, obviously. Right? I mean, not really. Like In terms of like your chess example, for instance, it's the same thing. I don't call that a sport. It's not in the esports world because it's not virtual, but I don't call it a sport either. I, I think it's virtual. That's the difference. So, so I got bad verb. Um... So for that example, video games, I only see them called esports now, esports, and that's and that to me is a distinction, right? That's something completely different. So I'm gonna leave video games out of this. Okay. Okay. I'm talking cheerleading, dancing, um, something we both did, show choir, band, marching band, uh, badminton, golf, all these things. Like people will still say that's not a sport, and that drives me crazy. Obviously, those things are sports. You co you compete. You work hard. You determine yourself. And even, like I said, the only reason people are saying, like, it's not like as a show choir person, I was like, I'm in sports. Uh, everyone's just like, no, that's not a sport. You're not, you're not. I play football. I do this. It's like no one asked of you if it was a sport. But since you're asking, it does all the same things. So, yeah, it's probably a sport. I think – I think a defin a, not a definition a um an explanation that I'm kind of leaning towards as we're talking about this is that if 
the physical exertion and preparation outweighs the mental then it's a sport does that make sense like i wouldn't call competitive chess a sport because that's so men that like that's so mental and and like straightly focused on strategy without any physical exertion other than obviously moving pieces so i think that's a class a competitive class outside of sport but something like um chill choir badminton golf i would put that in the sport category so i think i'm gonna land on the definition of physical exertion to mental exertion and if the ratio leans one way it's a sport if it leans the other way it's not I'll, I I kind of admit that's an honorable uh, distinction. I think that's yes. like this is really boring because we both agree, kind of. <laughs> but oh, wait, I'd already said we're not allowed to do that, so you have to disagree <laughs> with me because I'm sticking to my guns. Um, chess is the hard one. I think chess is. I, I mean, if 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 someone who plays chess gets mad at me for not calling it a sport, I'll call it a sport. I don't give a crap. <laughs> but. It's the people who are like really like making these distinctions. Like, there's only five sports, and if you don't play it, then you're not a sports guy. These people that you're talking about, I've never encountered. Like the people that wouldn't put golf in the sports category, I've never encountered these people. They're everywhere, Kyle. I'm serious. We went to school with them. Some of them, they are everywhere, and like they, they there are people who say soccer isn't a sport, Kyle. I'll kick their neck off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you'll you'll face my wrath. There are people who say that, and it's like. It's very obviously a sport, and this whole argument is dumb, but it's the only thing I can think of to start this episode. And you know what? You know what? Soccer is the most popular sport in the world, so suck on some big kinda potatoes. Is. It kind of is. So. It is, is. By, <laughs> factual, by factual nature, it is. Um, by all of the metrics, it is the most famous. I mean, the most world. Most popular. I mean, like, the world. I mean, sure, but, like, yep. America is basically the world. So. America is not basically the world. You're the worst kind of person. <laughs> <sighs> All right, folks. We're moving into uh, I, the main portion, which... What I, a wonderful transition, Kyle. I would assume is what I have titled it. I don't know. I just kind of go off a whim and then I let it be. Whammy! <laughs> that, you know, that's what I'm going to title this. You have no idea what I'm about to say now. Whammy! <laughs> We're going to start talking about the best fictional worlds, or maybe not the best, but ones that we would want to live in the most yeah. or be a part of the most. Yeah. And whether those are the best in your brains uh, is irrelevant because this is our conversation. Yep. You have ears and you're listening. So hi. So, okay, wait, then I, I want to make this distinction with you real quick. Are we talking, we're talking about. We we need we need to set the baseline rules for talking about these worlds. Sure so, we do. if like the the scene that we're putting ourselves into, or the world that we're being thrown into, are we assuming that we're being thrown in with what our base our best case scenario for us would be, or we're getting thrown in and kind of randomly rolling the dice on what role we're given inside of that world? No, I, best case scenario, like we we're like we're omnipotent kind of, and we're choosing like. Let's just use a base example, right? Harry Potter, right? We we have our house that we you know that we uh, are assigned to, but like you know we're not in, we're not in a not knowing any spells. You know what I mean? Like we we get to use magic and stuff like that. We're not a muggle. You know what I mean? Okay. That, that so rules can bend. I'm not you know a stickler for that, but I just I just think it's going to be interesting to talk about because okay. both of us are into fiction. Well, not. spoilers. We'll get to the Harry Potter one, but I don't want to start with Harry Potter. Definitely not. That's the one everyone thinks of, so I don't want to start with that either. All right. Um, do you want to go first? Sure. All right. Hit me with it. SpongeBob. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wouldn't have even made my top hundred if I'm if I if I came <laughs> if I came up with a list of a hundred fictional your worlds. Favorite thing to do, Kyle. Your favorite thing to do is if I say I, you're like, Jake, if you want to start, and I'm like, yeah, I'll start. And I'll read my first like the you know, just an answer that I that I like. And you're like, that wouldn't even make my top million. <laughs> because you you pick the you pick the stupid I give me any good reason why. Anything. Um I want to be anything animated. So I mean, this doesn't like encompass all animation, but like animate animated uh, characters, you know, can die, but normally don't die. They're indestructible. They have like you know, SpongeBob it, to me is a big part of my childhood. I love, love, 
love SpongeBob. I would love to live in Bikini Bottom and like <laughs> hang out with those characters and like laugh with SpongeBob and like hang out with him and Patrick. And like, I would love to see myself drawn as a fish in that in that world. I think I, I would look goofy. Um, what kind of fish do you think it would be? Um, I probably. Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> That's a really good question, Kyle. A fish inside of the SpongeBob world, right? Though. Yeah, right. I think, or I mean, any sea creature, I guess. I wouldn't be a shark. No, I'd be, I'd be a beluga whale, <laughs> or be I'd be a seal. You'd be Duh. a puffy nose whale. I'd be a seal. You'd be a SpongeBob seal. I'd be like the, the, a SpongeBob seal, and I'd have blue shorts. That's all I'd wear, and I have like a little, <laughs> I have a little belly, and I would have like little whiskers, and I would be, I'd be Jacob the seal. Is it? So would your character be walking on two legs or would it be maneuvering like a seal does um, in water? Like, obviously, they walk like they're on land underwater. So would you be scooting and booting on your belly or would you not on my belly, but on my high, like on my fins? So you'd be walking on your fins like, an, yeah, like, I guess so. Like a bipedal. And maybe for like uh, a fun little character moment, I can like slide around in my belly. And do a little <laughs> um, like when you're distraught, you start pacing in circles <laughs> on your belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, that'd be like, dude, it would be so much fun. You wouldn't like, you wouldn't have any responsibilities in that world. Like you can just like chillax and do whatever you want. Would you choose to be friends with SpongeBob and that whole game? hundred percent. Okay. SpongeBob and Patrick. And then I'd love to make fun of Squidward. I'd love to go like do science experiments with Sandy. Like that'd be so much fun. Uh, eat, I get to eat a crusty, cr uh, crusty crab. A crab patty. <laughs> um, which okay, they're just burgers. Like I don't think you're gonna experience anything special when well, you eat a Krabby Patty. Here's the thing, though, they're special in the show. So it's not like if I rec we created a Krabby Patty on Earth in the real life, just a burger. But down there, it, there's a reason why it's so special. You see what I mean? And it's, we don't know. We don't know because we're humans. So like to fish, it's going to be in that in that world. That it's the best thing you can ever taste, and it's not it's not just a regular burger down there. You know what I mean? It's 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 either magic or something. It, it's you know, it's just that. Do you Perfect. think that you would enjoy catching jellyfish, or would or would you mm. attempt that with them and just not yeah. understand? Why not? Uh, like obviously you would attempt it, but do you think that you would understand the joy in it, or would you not really like it? Do you think? I think I would love it. That'd be so much fun. Like, you can catch jellyfish. You can go surfing in the Goo Lagoon. You can, like, just... Dude, it'd be so much fun to be down there. Like, I, I just think that'd be so cool. Um, it kind of just sounds like living a normal life, going to the beach and going to get a burger, but instead, you're a seal. Well, I think it's just the characters that I love more, right? So, like, maybe in your mind, like, when you're thinking of these worlds, you kind of think of, like, just different people, like, you know, that you're meeting, not, like... Just the Harry Potter example again. You, you're not meeting Harry and Hermione and Ron. Right. I I was for this one specifically. It's more about the characters. Okay. You know. Now, I mean, next biggest question for your SpongeBob world. Sure. I'm here. Do you anticipate also developing a fandom for Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy, if you're going to be hanging around SpongeBob and Patrick all the time? Yes. Um. And would you attempt to be part of their hero squad the way that they did? That'd be so funny. Yes, I would love to. Uh, and I, I'm all, I'm really trying to picture all these scenes with just kind of a seal next to them. Okay, <laughs> or just in the background, just wearing blue shorts and nothing else. <laughs> no, you know how Patrick only has the, the you know the little shorts on? Yeah. I, I think I would like I would have like a pair of shorts on. Well, because then he has a, he has one fin though, that's the thing. So what would my costume look like? Maybe I should just wear just just a shirt instead. Like yeah, Squidward, because Squidward can't yeah. wear pants unless he has like four little legs on his. In the do little... do any of the characters wear full clothes? Well, like SpongeBob's SpongeBob... just got just shorts, really. No. I like it. It's got sleeves that his arms go through, but no. they're still. It, it, it's it's meant to be a ensemble. So like, if you dress up as him in in real life, you wear cargo shorts and then you wear like a polo. That's his entire outfit. He wears two different things. And he has underwear on and everything. So and then Sandy has like a. Uh, a She's got a whole space suit. suit. Yeah. Mr. Krabs has a pants, belt, got overalls, shirt, overalls, yeah. overall and stuff like that. Uh, Patrick only wears shorts because starfish. He only, you know, would wear those mm -hmm. and then, you know, right. Which like, confuses me the most because he's that's true. He's the only one with five limbs. Like a, a sponge doesn't actually is supposed isn't supposed to have the arms with fingers, yeah. but he's the only one that straight <laughs> up does have the correct amount of appendages yeah. for a full clothing set. And then he's the only one that doesn't have a full clothing set. Squidward doesn't wear pants. Um, 
But I, I don't know. I think I should only wear a shirt then. So what color should my shirt be? I don't, yeah, I don't think the blue shorts would work that well either. No, it, it wouldn't. I, I'm not going to think about it. I don't know why I even thought of that. Um, let's see. You're a seal. You're hanging out with SpongeBob and Patrick, so you can't wear the same colors as them. Nope. So you can't have green or pink, and you can't have brown, brown. or white. Brown and or you white. can't have yellow as no. a shirt either. So Purple. I mean, a, a dark purple, though. Maybe an easy an easy red, but... No, not red. I don't think red would look good. Purple. Purple and Pur- seal. Purple or blue? Um, yeah, I don't think blue would work that well. Okay. Just because you're in the ocean and almost all the backgrounds are going to be blue. Fair enough. You're going to clash, Jacob. <laughs> you want to clash in the SpongeBob world? So you don't, have, you don't have any interest at all. Now that I've even described it to you, like just like the life of ease... You know, I mean, obviously it sounds, it sounds nice. Doesn't but it? Like, 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 because I have no strong connections to SpongeBob because I, I didn't grow up with cable. I, I, I got, I, I got to love all the things that people our age loved as kids after I was no longer a That's kid. True. So I don't have these huge ties with SpongeBob. I mean, it's a fine choice, I guess. Like I, like now. I, like I said, I mean, I just kind of wanted the first things that came to my mind. I knew I wanted to talk about SpongeBob because I don't think that's something people often think about. Like when they think about these worlds, like this question, they're always like, "Oh, easy, Harry Potter, uh, Star Wars." Yeah. You know? So, your turn. All right. Um, I don't know how many we're going to be talking about each today. Make so, it important. I d- I do want to make it important. And so, a couple of these you'd be upset. One specifically, you would be upset with. And it's only for one specific reason, okay. but I'm not I'm not going to talk about that one. Why not? Not yet, at least. Okay. If I do. You know, I'll talk about it. <laughs> it's it's lit for one specific reason and I'll move on to something different. Okay. But the B movie. I know you hate the B movie, but it's only that I could know that we could talk to animals. I would just want to be a human in that earth that's been set to talk to animals or at least the insects. You know, because they're kind of the only animals that talk in that movie, except for the cow at the end. But just to talk to animals, you know, that's just that's just a talking to animal wish that I have. And it's 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 there in the B movie out of all (laughs) the movies and films and books where humans talk to animals and animals talk back. I just want to make you mad. That's the movie you chose. (laughs) I'm going to move on to something else. I just want to have a little fun. Um, when you told me one of these is going to make me mad, I was racking my brain. Like, what, <laughs> what is going to make me mad? And now you know. All right. Okay. Here's an here's an actual one that maybe you'll appreciate or maybe you would hate. I honestly don't know. But the world of being in school with the magic school bus, that is one I'd be okay with being in. Being in Miss Frizzle's class and saying, hey, take us to Pluto. Cool. And then we go. I'm with you. Whole bus all the way to Pluto in 0.2 seconds. I remember one very specific scene from the Magic School Bus, which is do you the like the redhead that everyone had to tell him to stop doing what he was doing? Arnold. Is that his name? I'm a real fan. I think his name's Arnold. I don't know. really remember. But when they were on Pluto, they had their spacesuits on. Oh, yeah. And his and, head freezes, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And he started to take it off. And everyone was like, no, don't do it. And then his head freezes over. And I really remember I was a kid and I was like, he just died <laughs> in this TV show. They just killed off this character. Yeah, it's Arnold. <laughs> and, and then they like they got back to the school and his like head was thawing out and he had a towel around him. And he was like, oh, thanks, guys. And I was like, <laughs> you could just take off your helmet on Pluto. Why haven't we gone yet as a, as a species? <laughs> but I mean, because I remember like different episodes, you know, like going yeah. inside of organisms or like seeing blood cells flying past you. Yeah. Like it'd be a very in, like I want to be a fifth grader, sixth grader, however, whatever age these kids yeah. were, and doing all these different things in Magic School Bus. Because a, I think I hate it when people are like, I don't hate it, but it kind of bugs me when people are like, I'm a this kind of learner or that kind of learner. Because I think I think everybody is all of them combined in some form or another. Like, I think everybody's a visual learner in some sense. Like, like if I, if I took you on a magic school bus and I took you inside of a human and like the red blood cells were flying past you and you saw some white blood cells, uh, go into arms and go into war against viruses. Like you'd remember exactly what all these different cells functions are. Cause it's very visual. It's easy to remember. But point being, I think 
visual learning is a big part of me. D- don't pay attention. I'm looking at nothing. You and looked over there twice. Okay. I, I, I'm he, looking at nothing. He looked <laughs> over my shoulder like three different times like someone was walking up to kill me. Like, that's no, what he I'm, looked like. I'm looking at nothing. And if I explain to you what I'm looking at, because there's not actually nothing, it's not going to make any sense You're to you. You're freaking me out. So don't pay attention to me. <laughs> Point being. Okay, I'll look over here. <laughs> How does it make you feel? <laughs> I'm all right with it. Point being, it'd be a very good visual learning space for you know the year, two, three years that Miss Frizzle is your teacher. Dude, yes. To take you literally anywhere. Okay. Did the Magic School Bus go back in time ever? Did it ever I'm go sure back into history? That was going to be my next question. So... What is your one destination that you wish you can go and do and see on the Magic School Bus? All right. Right now, I'm going to assume that it can't go back in time because I don't yeah. know that it ever did. Yeah. Don't assume that because that kind of is cheating. Like, like, what would you like to go learn about firsthand that you can't go and learn about right now? You know what I mean? Right. I mean, going somewhere outside of our solar system would be cool. Yeah. But... I don't I because I don't know much about outside of our solar system, I don't have a specific spot in mind. What would I want to go see? I mean what's what's a good what what's what's a what's a good answer? You know, I mean I would love I would love to be taken to the Taj Mahal. Yeah. I think that'd be very cool. Yeah. I mean I know it's a semi basic answer, but I just think that the whole scenery of the Taj Mahal and the whole history of that entire region, I think is very interesting. Now that I think about it, I think it does go back in time because, like, they do history lessons sometimes. I think they might. I don't really know. I think it's more science fiction, like more sciencey though. I don't know. Regardless. Yeah, it's typically a more sciencey show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think being in, I I, I would pick the Taj Mahal if she was like, "All right, it's student pick day. Where do you want to go?" And I'd be like, "Taj Mahal, please." Volcano. That's where I want to go. Any volcano? In, in, well, in a volcano, just to see how it looks. like, un, Or, or oh, bottom of the ocean. Oh, it's straight to the Mariana. That's a way better. Mariana's Trench. Yeah, we're yeah. going to go meet Terry. We're going to go meet Terry. <laughs> uh, we're we're going to sacrifice Arnold because he has too many dumb questions. Yeah, 100%. We're going to the bottom we're of the ocean. We're going to Mariana's Trench, baby. Yeah, that's definitely where we're going with on the Magic School Bus. That's 100% a good answer. Yeah. All right. Magic School Bus. I, that's a solid answer. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with All that. All right, cool. I really didn't know if you were going to really hate me as soon no. as I said Magic School Bus. No, that's a good answer. I really like that answer. Um, What's another one? Um, Oh, I don't even know why I, did, I had to think more than five seconds. Okay. Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. So, in this world, like I said, I don't think I would want to make our world adjust to Pokemon like like in the Pikachu movie that came out like a couple of years ago, like last year or yeah, yeah, Detective year Pikachu. I think it was 2019 yeah 2019 I, I, I don't dis- I disregard 2020 at this point now like it didn't, nothing happened that year so I just think last year is 2019 and yet everything happened I know you know so yeah I want to be in the anime training and like going on my own adventure I think that'd be so much fun uh, and like, like I said, you're a teenager, so they don't ever like pay their bills. They eat all this great food. So if you're they thrown, bond with their Pokemon, if you're thrown to the world, you want to be thrown in as somebody who's just getting introduced to Pokemon yeah. or someone who's kind of already. No, as a 10 year old. So like, like I want to be in that world, get my first Pokemon and go on my own journey. Would you have the knowledge that you have now? Or would you have the knowledge of a 10 year old and not really know much about Pokemon? Maybe, you know, some like well, moves because, that they have or different evolutions and blah, blah, blah. Because Pokemon are part of their world. I would know about them. Right. You know about them but for sure. I wouldn't know like how to train them or anything like that. I, I had to learn. So just kind of going in blind into a yeah. whole training session. You Dude, could, you would never, so sl- you would fun. never sleep. Because that's how, that's how the games are played. You just kind of go. You I mean, never check in with your parents. Like I said, I'd be in the anime, so like it'd be a little different. Okay, the anime, not the games. Okay, I see, I see. I mean, I guess I guess the games. Like Whenever you turn the game off, the character's sleeping, I guess. I mean, they, they don't just stand still. Over. Yeah, they do, because then you come back in the save, and they're exactly in the middle of the grass that you left them in. Well, They haven't gone to bed. We'll see. We'll see about that. Is there a specific Pokemon region in the anime that you'd want to be going into? Johto. My favorite region. Uh, definitely Johto. Um, there are a few Pokemon, obviously, a few, a couple hundred that I'd be missing out on. So but, many. You'd be missing on a good 500. Maybe Hoenn. That way I can get, like, you know, the good ones, all the good ones. Because then, like, once you get to fourth, fifth, sixth, it's kind of like, eh. And then seventh and eighth are pretty good. So, um, definitely Johto. Johto or Hoenn. 
All right. Uh, who are you? Uh, who? Who? What? What team are you trying to make for yourself as a ten year old? You know, you're in the Johto region or the Hoenn region. I'll shoot Hoenn. All right. What? What? What is? What is the ideal team you're making for yourself? And because I mean, this is the a ideal. A lot of world. our fans. Are, a lot in. of our people are just like, "What are they talking about?" It's Pokemon. Look, if you're not a Pokemon fan, I'm sorry, but you're missing out. And it's a good. I love. I love. Pokemon. I don't have anything more to say to you outside of that. <laughs> my 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 team. I'm gonna say. Gotta go with Blaziken. If you're Gen Three, obviously Blaziken, dope. I, although all three of the starters there are really good. I like all three of them. Yeah, it's a good set. Um, let's see. I love me a good old fashioned uh, Metagross. Obviously. <laughs> uh, uh, what's in Gen Three? I'm like combing through my head right now. I've always liked Tropius. But I don't think I want him on my team. Tropius kind of sucks. It does suck, but that's why I mean, it should... in those fly, you know that you can teach Tropius fly. It probably does like no damage at all. No, I know, but, but... you can teach it fly because you know in those in those gens you have to, you have to have yeah. HM sleeve. Um, Quagsire. Yeah, Quagsire. You know that's a good team right there. Just those three. Just those three. <laughs> um, I can't think of it. I mean Tyranitar. Yeah, you know some of my favorites in there. Arcanine. You know, I would love I would love to be thrown into po- into the Pokemon region same like same as you i'm just i'm agreeing which, with the answer which which um which region would you go into it's hard to say i mean i i mean obviously i'd want to get thrown into um wow i'm blanking on the most recent one Ga- galar yeah uh, the galar region just to have access to all the different pokemon but in terms of which one i love the i love the most um probably hoenn yeah, it's, just a, it's a solid region. You it's get so all three good. of the, the, the first three, which are the best. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, man. I would. Yeah, Pokemon's a great answer. Pokemon. Solid. Be- I want to know what it's like to have every single different kind of Pokemon as a pet. Yeah. Right? right? Like inside the world, I want to experience legitimately every Pokemon and be like, oh, I, I don't want this as a pet anymore. Or some of them I, that I want to keep forever. Mm-hmm. Like. Except for Mawile. I don't want Mawile ever. I hate that thing. No. To each their own. Uh, let's see. What else do I have here? What do I want to be a part of? This is this is hard to pick. Um, all right, this is a fairly basic answer if you've ever seen the show. Um, but Avatar, Last Airbender. Okay. I would love to be in part of that world. Okay. I'm with you. And then obviously you have the question, which element do you want to bend? If if you don't know what again, I'm gonna say if you don't know what Avatar: The Last Airbender is, or you've never seen it, a go watch it. It was it got thrown on a Netflix in the middle of quarantine, so you should have watched it then. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch it. You should. Great show, fantastic show. It's the, it's really the best. I mean, people call it like a Western anime because obviously it's made in the. In the US. It's a, it's a United States made show, but it's very anime esque. Mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, so if you don't know what it is, you have fire bending, water bending, earth bending, or air bending. And I th- I would choose water bending because I th- I think one of my main reasons is that water bending has this sub ability called blood bending, <laughs> where you can like you know if you're in a battle, you can control the person that you're fighting by controlling their blood. At least at night when the moon is up, because the waterbenders, their power comes from the moon. So at nighttime, their power is greater. And firebenders, their power comes from the sun. So when the sun is up, their power is greater. So like when the moon is full and it's you know it's a it's a it's a clear night, then your bloodbending capabilities are at their greatest, and that would make me feel so powerful. And that's all I want is the power of waterbending. Though I would probably choose earthbending after that if I didn't choose waterbending. Really. I, especially the way that it's portrayed in the show, because there's this character Toph, mm-hmm. uh, who is blind, and Earth bends, and she's like the best Earth bender that there is, because she's blind and she can sense kind of where everyone is, because her her just her other senses are heightened, and because her just being able to sense people without having to see them, she's a better Earth bender because of it. Incredible, and I would love to be a part of that. I just love Avatar Last Airbender, dude. <laughs> I want a big old six-legged flying bison. Yeah. Because he's so cute. And I want to fly around without having to bend air. Even though technically bison, the flying bisons are 
the creatures of the airbenders, but I just want one <laughs> as a waterbender. Um, so you would choose waterbending or earthbending? Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about Avatar, so I really can't entertain this conversation at all. Well, I mean, I, I you understand the concepts of the four bending. So yeah. which one would you choose if you were going to choose one? I'd probably choose water. Yeah, that's um, the correct answer. But we're not allowed to agree on stuff. You have to be divisive. So, so, you, so, you, can choose, so you can choose earthbending. No, waterbending is my first choice. I'm saying if I couldn't choose water, which I still can because this is my choice, you have to choose something else. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, now I have to. Yep. I'm not going to, though. That's right. We're both going to waterbend, and I'm just going to destroy you. <laughs> um, yeah. I think my next best choice, and this is a fairly obvious one, the Marvel Universe. Okay. I, I didn't put that down. I thought about it. I didn't put it down, though. I'm really shocked that's not one of your 15, 16 answers you have on there. I, again, I thought about it, and I was going to write it down. And I was like, I probably won't talk about that because there are other ones that I want to be a part of. Yeah. Not more, but that are more interesting to me. I, this is one I is plaguing my mind consistently. I love superheroes. Like, so, so much. Love them. I, like, it's enthralling, entertaining. I just, I love it. I love it so much. Um... I know your favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man, Spooderman. Yeah. I tried to be Spider-Man when I was a kid. There were these um there were these toy planes that we had and I literally sat there for 4 hours. There was little plastic toy planes and I sat there with 4 hours with this pair of scissors trying to cut the tips off of these toy planes, which I never got the tips off. I was just making silver scratches on them, but I wanted to cut the tip off and then like pry it open in half and stuff it with string and then close it back. And then some, I somewhere in my brain was like, once that happens, I can shoot the string out and be Spider-Man. So I legitimately spent hours trying to cut the tips off these planes so I could be Spider-Man That's so funny. and shoot strings out of my wrists. I loved you remember, Spider-Man. Do you I still remember, do. Do you remember those big shooters that they had on the, on the arms? Like the big old, like, yeah, tubes? they had that lever that was like f- four inches long that you had to touch with your finger to like activate it. Yeah. And it was this big old like tube that you wore like on your arm and it sprayed out. Yeah. Like, this, silly string it's just silly string it yeah. Didn't, <laughs> yeah i remember those oh, man. i think you could get i think at some point those were like mcdonald's and burger king toys no or way some, something akin to those not like the bigger ones that we we're talking about but something mm. something smaller than that was a was a toy you could get at a fast food restaurant dude superheroes are so cool i would love to be a superhero that'd be so cool what would be your your go-to superpower <sighs> that's hard out of the ones that already exist in the marvel universe Sure. I mean, just say what you want. Like, squirrel girl. I want control of, the, of all the squirrels. All right. <laughs> Sounds fun to me. I'm just kidding. Um, well, no, that's your final answer. No, it's not my final answer. I, I, was, I didn't say final answer. I was going to go for squirrel girl, but we can't agree. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've always had this idea for a power that would technically make you omnipotent, which is kind of no fun. Yeah. But it's just like the ability to change probabilities. So, like, if I come home, what are the chances that my bathtub is going to be filled with macaroni and cheese for me to have for dinner? Zero percent. Uh, before I walk in, I'm going to make that a hundred percent chance, and then I'm going to walk in, and my bathtub is going to be filled with macaroni and cheese. To what extent, I don't know. That part I can't control. Just the probability is what I want to control. You know? Yeah. So that would be fun. Other than that, honestly, I just want Spider Man's powers. I yeah. just want to be Spider Man. I, I've always loved super strength. Uh, that's just like, and, and like durability. Mm. That should have been like my go to. Um, and I would really love to have some kind of like, you know, like regenerative ability and like some cool costume. I just want to go fight people. That just sounds like, like such a, you know, not a fun life. I don't know how to describe it. It's so cool to me, but it doesn't seem like it'd be like, Fun. It I, sounds like a noble and worth it life. Yeah, but like not like I don't know. But maybe I would feel fulfilled, but I wouldn't be like, This is fun. I love this. I think I think some people probably would be like eventually like, Yeah, this is really fun. I like doing this. Um I mean, especially like and that's one of the reasons that I would pick Spider Man is just the way that I would move around mm-hmm. without the fighting. That's true. Is so much fun. 
Or at least it looks like it's so much fun. I mean, I also um, would love to be like a person who's like has telekinesis and like can like use the force in the in sense, for lack of a better word, like, you know, right. um, like m- make energy fields and stuff like that and energy blasts. I'd be so much fun, too. Um, you know, what's disappointing. What's that? Is that the human imagination can think of all of these things. And we can't do any of these things. It sucks, dude. It's so sad. It freaking sucks. It It's just awful. I want all of that to crime. be real so badly. Like, how can somebody think of Pokemon, all these amazing little creatures? Now, granted, 80% of them are based off of animals that we have on right. this earth. But regardless, like they can create all these designs and their powers and their moves and stuff like that. How can someone create that and it not be real? I'm saying, dude, how can... Like, it seems like such a basic concept to us, right? For, like, a person to be able to put their hands out and stop bullets in midair. Yeah. And you're like, man, that's such a cool thing to be able to do. A human thought of that, and then none of us can do it. Or just put a shield around you that's made of energy. You'd be like, oh, there's energy all around us. Surely we could do that. It's Nope. Nope. No, we can't. Or just being able to fly just or kind being, of off a whim. Or making a suit of armor that has rocket propulsions from your feet and has you know it's powered in the center of the chest like it makes so much sense but Mm -hmm. like we can't make that people are getting closer to that though iron man is becoming more and more of a reality but the thing that bothers me the most about iron man and darth vader suits in particular is the helmet it (laughs) infuriates me how big and giant the helmet is some people have been making some really good iron man helmets though i agree specifically the helmet i agree but sometimes it's just too big and it makes me mad (laughs) <laughs> it makes me mad I want it to be small Like form well, fitting How else are you going to fit a camera Inside of the helmet To have the weird shots Of Tony Stark Talking to Jarvis God, God. <laughs> You can't fit a camera in there If it's too form fitting That's so funny um, well, Give me I, one Kyle I guess along the same vein One I had on here Was My Hero Academia mm, Because That's a really good one uh, obviously, They're called quirks Inside of the show Again this This is, this is an anime again but an actual hey, anime this time. A really good one. My Hero Academia is so well thought out. And when they explain people's quirks, they always say a quirk and you're like, oh, that's so overpowered. How can anybody defeat someone with this quirk? And then they'll be fighting and like some commentator will say, uh, this happens when this quirk happens. And you're like, oh, that makes honestly the science behind that is like there's one called there's a um a hero called Endeavor. Mm-hmm. And his quirk, I think it's called Hellflame. Basically, he just can produce fire from his body in just insane amounts as well and at some point the show tells you it's like the magnitude of heat that he radiates it kind of burns up his insides and takes a lot of energy out of him you're like oh that makes sense but there's one uh he can pass through anything like he can be invincible and pass through walls bullets anything and i'm like oh well how do you even defeat that because he shows up behind you after passing through something and The way that he fights specifically, he passes through the floor and then goes through and pops up behind somebody. That's kind of like his main way of fighting. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it it tells you and he goes, well, when I when I go into that shifting phase, light even passes through the corneas in my eyes. So I can't see anything. I can't feel anything. And so it took him an insane amount of training to be able to know where he was going. And sometimes his clothes accidentally fall off when he's. When he's passing through stuff and fighting, huh. which is hilarious, yeah. but like it, like it, it puts the science behind things as well. Like I said, light can't pass through his eyes, so he can't see anything. You're like, oh, that's genius. That's really cool. Um, so just being able to pick a quirk like that. I mean, there are some of them. There's one. Her name is Lady Mountain, I think, and she can just grow up to seventy feet tall and then fight. You know, whatever nonsense comes their way. So it's it's in the same realm of superheroes. Uh, as the Marvel Universe, but yeah. they're called quirks and they're a little bit different most of the time. Do you have a quirk that you've thought of, or besides probability, man? I, right. You know, do you have something you thought of that would be cool? I mean, there are some interesting ones. Like the main character, his quirk is called uh, One for All, which is passed down from generations. And it's basically him having super strength and super speed and kind of an amalgamation of a bunch of different basic ones that we know of. Yeah. Um, But I think. I think a really cool one, and this is a quirk that someone else has in the show, and I think it could be used really well, is she can can create any inorganic material 
and she can produce it out of her body as long as she knows the chemical makeup of the material. Mm. So, you know, if she knows the chemical makeup of steel, she can produce steel out of her body and, you know, and then use it for, and she can produce it in whatever form she wants as well. And it also is proportional to the amount of food she's eaten, I think. So she has to have nutrients in her body to then be able to use them to create materials. I would choose either of that. Mm. Or there's a guy with a quirk that he can change parts of his body into parts based off what he's eaten that day. Again, it's another eating one. But if he's eaten lobster that day, then he can change his arm into a lobster claw. That's cool. And so he has like incredible strength on that arm. Or if he's eaten octopus that day, he can change his, you know, his arms into octopus appendages and be able to, you know, hold down eight enemies at once while using the rest of his body. I have a superhero or quirk idea. For Burt Kreischer. <laughs> okay. What? What? I don't know what the name is, and I've, I've been workshopping the name a little bit. But the idea is his powers change and mold based on the type of alcohol he's drinking. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Burt Kreischer is like one of the biggest party animals on the entire like face of the planet. He's just drunk all the time. He's the machine. He's the machine, and I absolutely adore him. He's a great, great comedian. Um, but... I, I've, I've thought of a few of them, right? So if he drinks whiskey, he has, like, fire powers. Like, he can breathe fire and, like, because whiskey kind of burns. Right, you know? yeah. He can, like, sling fire. Um, if he drinks beer, you know, beer makes you just kind of go. He can play football really well. Or, like, well, you know, if, if you if you drink beer, occasionally, like, you'll have, like, these weird feats of, like, strength or whatever. So, like, I was thinking he could be really strong, like, or have, like, a, a belly move, like, with the beer belly thing. <laughs> um, for vodka, like, I think vodka, I think of, like, crispness of vodka. So, I think, like, he could be, like, I feel like vodka is kind of, like, a weird one. Like, I think if he drinks vodka, he can control bears. Control bears? <laughs> I, I think that's, I think if he drinks vodka, <laughs> he can be able to control bears. Or he could turn bears. into a bear. He could turn into a bear. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Like a big old bear guy. Like, that'd be cool for vodka. And he's bear crusher. Um, for, uh... For uh, tequila, tequila. I think of tequila. I think of really cool drinks. I think ice powers for that one. Okay, you know, just kind of going down the line. Bourbon. I think of like I, when I think of bourbon, I think of like trees and oak. So I think he can have like vine powers out of his you know, out of his arms and stuff like that. If he drinks rum, he could pirate a ship. And then wine. Wine is the one that I've struggled with. We need to just workshop one for right now. All right, wine. When I think of wine, I think of France. When I think of France, I think of <laughs> surrendering so <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he just shouldn't drink wine maybe that's maybe that's not maybe he can't wind down with wine i thought you were gonna, thought you were gonna say baguettes so his arms just turning to baguettes and he's just like he's just swinging bread <laughs> i was gonna say when i think of wine i think of love okay so maybe he is weaker when he drinks wine or like he can make anybody fall in love with him. And like, that's a, he is like, he's, he's seductive, but it's used for comedy because obviously Burt Crusher is not conventionally attractive. He's got a gut and like, you know, he's, you know, an older guy. So like he like to, to like the viewer of the comic or the movie, he looks normal, but he's like being funnily like you know, sexy, <laughs> but to everyone else, he looks like Brad Pitt or like Angelina Jolie or something. Like I can that. see the com. I can see the, uh, the comic strip. And the story and like the storyboard in my mind of him drinking yeah. wine. And then the next scene is like his enemy is on the right lower corner going like with a text bubble. Like, what is he doing? And he's walking at him naked, <laughs> just like with a pink aura around him. So, so what I want for his costume. OK, I want jeans. I want him to have a belt with like little vials of alcohol, <laughs> like different types of alcohol on his belt. Um, and again, I haven't thought of every power yet, but like I, I want to think of one. Like moonshine, I think would give him like invincibility because moonshine is like the purest, like one of the purest forms of alcohol. Okay. Um, but like a, a little belt, like a decorative belt, like a big belt buckle on it that like maybe has like his symbol on it, um, with all the little vials of alcohol on it. And then I want him to have a vest with frills, frills on it. You know how like cowboys have like the frills or like cowgirls have like frills on their like boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want his vest to have that. Okay. Of and course. then I want him to have either like a ball cap, like a like. A, Baseball cap? Oh, I thought you said a bald cap. <laughs> no, like a baseball cap or like a like a cowboy hat. Like okay. I want him to be like a, you know, I don't know. And maybe the 
the um the power that each of his abilities has is correlated with the proof of the alcohol that he has yeah so like you know if it's 90 proof then he's, he's big boy mode he's big boy mode um so yeah i i think that's a really funny character <laughs> bert, bert if you're listening to this bert first of all love you you're amazing also we need to make a movie together <laughs> he would totally green like this that would his, qu- his quirk would be called alcoholism <laughs> 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 and that <laughs> he would fit in perfectly oh my into my god. hero academia. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of like, what happens when he drinks sake? Ooh, when he drinks sake, he gets like super cool ninja skills. <laughs> yeah, he's just a ninja. <laughs> he just gets like these crazy fighting skills. He can move super fast. That'd be so. I gotta make a list. Yeah. That is so... On- honestly, I think he. This this is a very cool idea. Isn't it? I think that's really fun. And I think they should introduce and this per- in season five of My Hero Academia. And Kurt <laughs> Kreischer is the perfect guy to play this. Because like he'd fight like some I don't know he'd fight this really crazy villain, but like when you know it'd be like an underdog story. Like he's down on his luck, but then he gets like experimented. It'd be so fun. Like it would be such a good movie for him to play. I, I feel like it would be good. I really I really want him to make a cameo in season 5 of <laughs> My Hero Academia. <laughs> and like and cuz when when it go when it cuts in between scenes where like a commercial would be, it typically shows one of the characters faces and says their quirk and the explanation and I really just need to see an animated Burt Kreischer face that says alcoholism. <laughs> when he drinks different alcohols, he has different abilities. Dude, it would be so funny. I would love that. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That'd be so good. All right. Hit me with another one. Another one. Another one. Another fictional world for your boy, Jacob. I would love to be a part of a Shakespearean play. But not like be in a play, but like be in that world. That world be real and then you're a part of it. Yeah. A specific one or just kind of Hamlet would be cool. I love Hamlet. I think I, I like the the knights part of that. And mm-hmm. I, I think like that's kind of where I kind of drew it from, like the knights part, like the knights and round table or something like something like that. Um but Hamlet or Romeo and Juliet, I think would be really cool. Okay. Well I, if you're in Hamlet, then you are going to die. True. <laughs> but, that, if, but if you're not um who is who is the friend of Hamlet that survives? He's the only one. Horatio? Uh, no, Horatio's in. Isn't Horatio in uh, Romeo and Juliet? Maybe. Hold on, I have to find out. Because if you're not this a friend of Hamlet's, then you're not gonna live. Who is Horatio from is Shakespeare? That? Yo, he's from Hamlet. Okay, cool. Uh, I think Horatio is the one who survives. Yes, Horatio is the one that survives. Yep. So if you're not him or the king of the neighboring land, was that Fortinbras? Was that him? Yeah. So if you're not either one of those two. Then uh, you're gonna end up dying. Um, give me one second, cause I I just thought of something. Okay. Um, there is a play or a story, a movie. It, it's been all three that is written about two side characters from Hamlet. Okay. Oh. And they are the the, the side characters, and then they come into the movie and into Hamlet at a certain time, and it's the whole movie and story is about those two characters. Yeah. I cannot remember. Their names, yeah, and those are my favorite characters in Hamlet. <laughs> I on. love those; Hold they're on. so funny. Like, especially when you read, if you don't understand Shakespeare, when you read it and then have it translated to modern English, those two are so funny. Rose and Cancer, Guildenstern are dead. Yes, Rose and Cancer, Guildenstern. Yes, I. You know what? Now I want to be them. Me and you need to be Rose and Cancer, Guildenstern. <laughs> um, and it's... when people liken Lion King to Hamlet, people kind of say that Timon and Pumbaa are the Rose and Cancer, Guildenstern. Exactly. And so, like, if you have to read it with kind of those two in mind as well, if you don't understand. Shakespeare to to really love those two characters the way that I do. Yeah. So go read Hamlet if you don't like Shakespeare. It's and good. Hamlet's great. At um, least translate it to modern English for yourself. It's a great play. I um I performed in Hamlet, but not real Hamlet. It was uh uh what is it like? It's it's like a well my my theater teacher or director um wrote rewrote the version of Hamlet. And wrote it in like uh pop, not pop punk but like uh cyberpunk like in the oh, way yeah, way yeah, future yeah. it was called Uptown 1.0 or Uptown 2.0 and like made all the allegories like you know to it and like made changed everybody's name but like kept the same like you know so I think Hamlet it was a play by a girl so I can't remember her name 
was like, oh, I can't remember. I was, I played Polonius, and I was my name was Pollard. That was my name. Pollard. But, yeah, it, and it was a really really fun spin on the on the play. Um, but like I said, I would love to be a part of like, uh, like a Shakespearean play or like a or like a novel or something like that. Like in like that time period, like the Knights of the Round Table, you know, adventure that kind of stuff, or like a Monty Python, you know, yeah, that kind of adventure is so <laughs> funny. <laughs> um, Monty Python is so good. I Kyle showed me uh, was it, was it Holy Grail, Holy Grail, Monty Python, Holy, and Grail, Holy Grail this past year, and holy crap, that movie is so funny. so funny. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this on here, but I'm gonna say it. And this is something I've always seen mostly true is that almost all of the dudes that I've ever met have loved this movie. And almost all of the females that I've ever met have hated this movie. So take that with a grain of salt. But legitimately, I've again, I've never met a dude, almost never, that doesn't like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I've never met a girl, almost never, that has liked Monty Python and the Holy Grail. There have been like one or two exceptions on each side out of the you know, thousands of people that I've met since I'm so outgoing. <laughs> there's there's almost no exceptions to the rule. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it, take that rule with pretty much 100% certainty. So, yeah, that, that, that'd be such a cool little world to be in, I think. The, the fighting, the the feast, yeah. like the brotherhood, I think that'd be cool. Um, This is a hard decision because a lot of the fictional worlds that I'm a big fan of are kind of in that same realm of, you know, swords fighting and feasts and kind of medieval-esque time period. Yeah. Um, things like Middle Earth from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Very similar. Obviously, there's some magic in Middle Earth, um, but very similar. There's some magic in Camelot, too. Yeah, and there's, ma yeah, there's magic in Camelot and King Arthur yeah. has his, you know... Uh, whatever have you. So I'm trying to pick something kind of outside of the. Oh, okay. Mm. I'll I'll go with this one. I'll go with Narnia. I really like Narnia. It's cool. And I loved the books. Only the first movie is really good. Yeah. The other movies are kind of trash. They are. But I love Narnia. It's also got a. Inside of Narnia, it's also kind of got a medieval vibe in terms of the way that fighting happens. Would but, you like to be a Narnian or would you like to be a kid who's visiting Narnia? Oh, that's difficult. Yeah. I think I'd like to be a Narnian, but. I think. Well. Also, what kind, what, what, what part of the story would you like to be in? Like, what, like, would you I, like to be during the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Or yes, like I want to be there during the Lion, Witch, and the, and the wardro Wardrobe. And I want to have a close relationship with Aslan mm. just cause he's a talking lion. And I really need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, because of the way the story is framed, my initial reaction is to say, I want to be a person visiting. Cause I want the experience of discovering Narnia. Yeah. But also that means I'm just kind of a regular human that discovered it. And that's kind of boring. I, I'll be a beaver. <laughs> you're just going to be a beaver. I, I forgot that beavers like just exist in that world. I want to be a beaver in Narnia. Beavers are cool, dude. The the only beavers they're kind of like seals. The only beavers you meet in Narnia are kind of mean until the very end. Like they're hospitable, but then they're kind of angry at the humans for even being there in the first place. And then at the end, they're like, ah, "All right, I guess you're fine." I'll be a beaver. You don't you don't want to be Mister Tumnus? Um, I was him in the Narnia place. Exactly. So, so you don't want to be him in the real. You don't want to be in the real Narnia. I don't like hooves. <laughs> 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 why don't why don't even I don't like hooves, man. <laughs> I like toes, you know. I mean, not like beavers have toes, but like you know, I I, I feel like the the satyr part of it. I don't know. Satyrs always kind of bothered me because they're all furry and stuff. It's itchy. Well, because they're half. They goat. got a fur wedgie. <laughs> is the satyr half goat? Is that what it is? I'm pretty sure. I think it's half goat. It, the that word has always been weird to me because like there's satyrs and then there's other an, another goat human hybrid. Which also kind of is weird to me because there is th there's another name for one I can't remember what it's oh. called um, Seder and um, I can't remember I don't know I don't know the one you're talking about um, but I know like when someone said oh a Seder and then they pointed to something different that I didn't know what it was oh gotcha so I don't know regardless um, but a goat human hybrid like how did that come out <laughs> like when you think about it you're kind of like that's one ah, that's one of the things that be... happened in human imagination that I'm okay with it not being 
real. Right. That's what I was yeah, saying. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it, but like... So, when you're you, asking me, Kyle, do you want to be a beaver or do you want to be a goat-human hybrid? You know what I mean? I mean, beavers are also kind of lame. So, you're either picking a lame beaver or just kind of a lame dude with dude, hooves. Dude, the beavers fought in the war. So did Mr. Tumnus. Yeah, Mr. Tumnus, again, is a goat-human <laughs> hybrid. How do you think that was created? <laughs> Let's just leave it there, and I'm going to be Mr. Beaver. <laughs> I think I think I would want to be a Narnian just again because of just for the sake of not being a human. Yeah. But also I want that experience of just discovering Narnia, which you would have to be a human to have. Right. So I'm at a crossroads. I'm going to pick Narnian for now, but I I'm going to pick just a regular Narnian. Would you be like a dwarf? Or like I definitely a, wouldn't be a dwarf. Would you like I wouldn't a, be an ogre. Hmm. I think I would, I would. I think I would just be something simple, you know, just like a, a human inside of the Narnia world. Lame. That's I'm just Beaver. Experiencing Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> Lame. I'm Beaver. If not, then um, you'd be a centaur. I I would be a centaur. Uh, Again, that, you gotta go through like the ethics of that though. You're no, a horse-human no. hybrid. Like, but ooh. see, inside of this world though. Since, like, there's so many crazy things that exist that you can't just assume that a horse-human... It's only a horse-human hybrid to our human minds. But inside of this world, that's just thing that's just something that existed from the beginning i'm not gonna go through the logistics of it possibly being this weird bestiality <laughs> product it's some, i think that's what it it's is it's something that was there from the beginning just the way that humans are now Dude, we're just here from the beginning a minotaur <laughs> a, a minotaur. minotaur you could be a minotaur i'll be i'll be a centaur human mostly but horse where it counts <laughs> <laughs> The Greek gods. I would love to be either in like the Percy Jackson world where like mm -hmm. they're kind of intermingled with modern day, you know, uh, ch shenanigans. Which, by the way, the Percy Jackson series. So good. Dude, solid. I really want them to make the movies and do it right. I think they're, they're on their way. I sure hope um, so. Because I, I think Disney bought it. So I, I really hope so, because it could be so good as I, movies. I think the Greek gods are really interesting. And I think that that whole like mythos for, mm -hmm. for you know, not lack of a better term, that's the perfect word for it, um, is so interesting and so cool. Like, ugh, so cool. Or like Hercules. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That'd be so cool. Would you want to be – would you want to be – a god inside of the mythical god world or would you want to be a demigod that kind of experiences the likes of earth and the gods or see the thing about demigods is they always get the short end of the stick they always like either die or have these terrible tragedies the gods though they have horrible things happen to them normally get off scot-free i think i'd be a god all right and i would be persephone <laughs> <laughs> Well, I would be Aphrodite. Oh, that's what I meant, Aphrodite, not Persephone. Dang, I, I meant to say Aphrodite. Dang it! I, <laughs> I messed up the joke. I beat you to it. Um, no, I, I probably would be Dionysus or something, or Hephaestus. Dionysus is god of wine, isn't he? Yeah, god of wine. Hephaestus is the god of uh, hammer guy. He goes oh, ooga ooga. All right, yeah. <laughs> um, Dionysus. Um, there's Ares. Obviously, god of war. Oh, Poseidon. Poseidon. Yeah, we get to see the bottom of the ocean. We get to be Terry again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, if I can go into a world and meet Terry, then I'm choosing that outcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the Greek gods. You know, I think that'd be so cool. Okay. A uh, question just inside of that mythical world. Say you weren't a god, right? Say you were a demigod like demigod. Percy Jackson, and you dip yourself into the river Styx. Hmm. What singular portion of your body are you choosing that is vulnerable? Because that's the way, at least inside of the book series, if you don't remember. I don't remember if you do. You dip yourself inside the river Styx, and you choose a very specific spot of your body to be vulnerable to attacks. That's why the Achilles heel is right. the what it is, because he chose his heel. Mm -hmm. The Percy Jackson chose, like, the very small of his back. And he was about to get stabbed, and then Annabeth jumped in the way, and she was like, no! And then she got stabbed, and it was a whole thing. I remember that very vividly from the books for some reason. Yeah. Point being, what part of you would you choose? My tuchus. <laughs> a, it's like, a small target. 
Like like the like the inside of the valley that can't really be touched, or something outside on the cheeks. Um, now that you say it, the inside of the valley, <laughs> my butt crack. <laughs> Plus, I, I think the, the least vital of the body parts. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it probably will hurt a little bit when I poop, but I mean, hey, more so than it did before. I mean, either that or like, I don't know. What, what's the least part? What's what's like the least vulnerable part part of your body? Maybe the bottom of your foot. I don't think anyone's gonna stab the bottom of your foot. Yeah, but you can still get somebody on the bottom of their foot. Like if you chop off their leg. Well, I guess you couldn't chop off their right. Leg you couldn't chop off their leg if they're if. That's a good point. Or maybe, like, like I just wouldn't kick at all. Or maybe like the, my armpit. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could see that, but you know, if you're if you're up swinging your sword. And then someone like gets to you first and goes through that arm through the pit, yeah. then you're done for. That's a hard move to make, though. Really hard. Yeah. Armpit. Answer. Yeah, I think I would probably choose the bottom of my foot. Somewhere like, somewhere like at the like like at the ball of my foot, or like just in the middle of the bottom of my foot, or maybe like the crease in between where your toe meets your foot. Mm. That little pinky toe crease, because my the to, the edge of my pinky toe is kind of thick for some reason, so it kind of covers the crease where the toe meets the foot. So it's almost always covered, regardless. Okay. So that's what I'm picking. I'm picking the crease between my pinky toe and the foot. Cool. So if someone's performing surgery on your uh, on your foot, you're done for. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, give me another one. All right. Um, we've gone for a decent bit here. We probably make one last one yeah each i guess sure um i don't want to talk about the obvious i mean i love talking about harry potter but that's obvious we, we'll just assume that everybody wants to be part of the harry potter world and uh I, I i could make 18 podcast episodes talking about all the things i love about the harry potter world and all the different things about it so i won't talk about that here how about Mm, what's a good one? I'm gonna go with Neverland, mm. the land of Peter Pan. That's a really good and one. And the Tiki Taki Croc himself. That's really good. I'm I'm a obviously big fan of Disney in general, which I don't think Peter Pan is a Disney original idea because most of them no, aren't. It's, it's a novel at some point. But obviously, that's kind of what made him popular. And, you know, just the whole idea of never growing up. Obviously, we're adults, but we still don't want to grow up because it's kind of scary. So I just won't. I'll go up there and I'll use my imagination to make the best food possible. Oh, yeah. I'll be one of the lost boys and just kind of hang out and do whatever I want. I scream, Rufy, oh, as he slides down. That'd be such a fun place to go. Such a fun place to go. And playing what, what, skateboard basketball. But what is in Neverland, though? Like, what is in there? Is I it mean, just like an island? I mean, there are mermaids and there are fairies. and You had me at mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> Manatees. And obviously, there's enemies to fight, like Captain Hook. And if I'm, if I'm one of the Lost Boys, I'm having just a time of my life fighting these people. Yeah. Pirates. People like Hook. And then trying to throw him into a croc that has a vendetta against him for whatever reason. Just and you know pirates in general, that like the pirates of the Caribbean world, but a little more uh, upbeat than the pirates of the Caribbean world. A little more, yeah. a little more fun animated. I think the pirate world is honestly one of the worst worlds to go into. <laughs> like at sea all the time, you have to pillage and fight to survive. That also sounds incredibly fun to me. It sounds fun, but like okay. Like, you have to fight to survive. And then you don't have, like, food readily available. There's no magic. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. unless you're in, like, you know, the the ocean, like, is magic in there? Like, sure. But, like, I don't know. To I me, mean, but there's all, there's all kinds of, like, you pillage a ship. You stop off at a port when you get to the mainland. Buy food. Have a good old time. Go back out to sea and sing a bunch of sea shanties. Sea shanties is the only good part about that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the... Neverland in general, never growing up and just really not having that a care a good, in the world. Absolutely. I agree with that 100%. And not having to try and understand women because that's not a problem in Neverland. And I don't have – that's not a stress that I would have anymore. Oh, Kyle. 
you silly Billy. That's a great reason, though. Don't even. <laughs> is, that, is that all you're going to say about Neverland? Yeah, I mean, I mean, also you'd have the ability to fly as long as you got a as long as you got a ferry around. As long as you got your Tinker Bell, you also can fly. I also I don't want to be Peter Pan. I just want to know Peter Pan. I want to be one of the Lost Boys. I want to I want I want to be a Lost Boy at the age that I am now. Mm-hmm. I want to go to Neverland now and never grow up from this age. I'm content here. Yeah, I think it's a good age. Definitely. So, yeah, I think Neverland would be a lot of fun. Hit me uh, with hit me with a final one, Jacob. A final one. I think this one is a very uh, popular one as well. Anywhere that goes to space. Okay. So like Star Wars and Star Trek, uh, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, any one of those types of movies or worlds, I would absolutely love to be like Futurama. It's all like my. My go-to. I love outer space. I love stuff about outer space. I love driving, you know, spaceships and fighting, you know, aliens and right. stuff like that. Like, that'd be so cool. I mean, they're all very different, though. So, I mean, at some point, you have to choose a specific one that goes to space, right? Because, you know, Star Wars is so, – there's I, a war and there's lightsabers in the Force <laughs> and Futurama that's not I, – I, I think I – the reason why I said all three is because, you know – I can talk about individually those ones and like, you know, obviously right. they're different in their own ways, but just to kind of wrap it all up, I think that's just kind of why I said anything that goes in space. Cause obviously Star Trek is the least cool of all. <laughs> 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 I, I don't hate on Star Trek that much, but um, like Star Wars, obviously it was, I would choose between Star Wars or Guardians of the Galaxy, like the Marvel okay. Star Wars, right. the Marvel space, you know, you know, Thanos and all that kind of crazy stuff. Yeah. I mean, I would certainly choose Star Wars and I'm, uh, I'm, we're throwing ourselves in the ideal situation we want to be in. Do I throw myself into the situation of being a Jedi? Absolutely not. No, you don't think so. <laughs> being a Jedi is kind of lame, and it's and it's kind of elitist too. Like I don't think I'd want to be a Jedi, but, but I want the Force. The Force is cool, but you know what's cooler? Being on the dark side. <laughs> they have the Force too. Yeah, they have the Force, and they have all the the power, and they have all the cool stuff. Yeah, but they always get blown up. Yeah, because they make these stupid planets where they've got this single hole that somehow <laughs> goes to the core of the planet. Um, see, that's why I wouldn't want to be at Star Wars. There's much more creative plot devices in like the mm. you know Guardians esque you know space stuff. So I, I think I would like to be like a superhero in space. I think it'd be the best of both worlds. Or like Rick and Morty, like they go and do like space hijinks all the time. They go to like a planet where. Everything is snakes, and they have like little snake jazz. The snakes go, tss, 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 <laughs> you know. And they have uh, an overlord planet that makes them sing songs and determine their fate of whether they live or die. Exactly. See, like that—that's my kind of, you know, like I like the, you know, unknowingness of space. Like it can be literally anything at all. It can be super boring but super cool at the same time. Do you think it really is infinite? I hope so. I hope there's something more than this Earth. Wouldn't that be insane if space was legitimately infinite? It would be insane, yeah, because we couldn't really think of it, because we don't know when we don't know what infinite is. We have never experienced it. Everything here is finite. Everything, unfortunately, except it's not, because I mean, like even ideas can be infinity. Like a lot of math relies on infinity, um, and there are different I mean, sizes like, of infinity. But like I said, we still can't wrap our minds around infinity. Oh no, absolutely not. Like grains of sand, there's. It seems like there's a lot of them, but that's still not infinity. And even the ocean, which is not infinity, and not even close. We haven't even explored all of it. And there are more. We haven't even seen Terry. There are more, there are more stars than grains of sand on every beach in the world. And yet, that's insane. I know, and that's why I want to go and do that. That's so many stars. That'd be so cool. Just be like driving a spaceship and like fighting things and like, you know, being a little captain. You know, way better than being a pirate. Wouldn't you be scared of black holes and dying stars that blow up right next to you and you didn't know that it was dying and then it implodes on itself and burns you? Sure. But I think there are, um, there are, um, I think in space, in these scenarios, there's like kind of like highways here, right? You don't drive in the middle of like a vol, you know, a volcano national park, you know, normally on the highway right you know you kind of drive on a, on, a, on a safe route when they make the roads i feel like you know there are probably people who make you know 
more, and that's not a thought in space. You know, we're like, we gotta get away from the black hole. <laughs> we gotta make a highway. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, whenever they're planning their maps, they're obviously avoiding stars that are about to implode, or you know, and they take billions of years to implode too. So you gotta think about that. Um, but you know, space is also spaced out. So like, that's why they call it space. <laughs> Kyle, that's oh why God. I'm here. That's why I'm here to help you out. Guys, now that you've learned something, <laughs> we can end it. Uh, yeah, I think we're getting close to the end here. Um, I think there are, well, I think I know there are obviously things we can fit in this episode, which is why I think we should make a part two to this. At eventually. some point, yeah. I've got I got quite an expansive list here. Not next week, but, you know, in no, the future. Yeah, in the future. Um, we need to make a part two. Uh, maybe when we can't think of anything to talk about. <laughs> uh, but this is a little fun exercise. I love talking about things like this. It's such a, like, talking about fantasy is so cool to me. Like, you know, thinking about, like, your wildest dreams is so cool we, to me. And it's hard. I I wonder if we would, if we would have the capability of thinking of something new, you know? Because, so, like, so much has been done in terms of fantasy and fictional worlds and books, like, everything has happened and yeah. like you could create like you could draw random lines and inevitably create a new creature or being because you know it that's it kind of exists but in terms of ideas in general it kind of feels like everything's been done but then you throw up the quirk of alcoholism and you're like you know what maybe everything hasn't been done we should cre- we should make a a universe kyle and make a, a that revolves around alcoholism yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> that's not a world I want to be a part of. That's my mommy, baby. <laughs> no. Well, you. let us know what some of your favorites are, and um, maybe we'll talk about them in the next step. Yeah, maybe, maybe, um, or maybe we'll just straight up disagree with you, and then tell everybody that your idea was stupid. Yeah. So you know, you're rolling the dice, but you know, take <laughs> take a chance. We'll, we'll probably do that. What's life without a little bit of risk? Yeah. All right, folks, we will uh, speak at you next week. See you later.